oracle architecture basically the main purpose of understanding the oracle architecture is to understand how our sql works our insert update delete select and create and all that stuff so that is what i will try to explain instead of kind of explaining the architecture i will try to explain you know how the select statement works and maybe understanding of how the select statement works will tell us what the architecture is then uh, maybe tomorrow we will see how the update statement works and that will explain some additional things in the architecture and likewise we'll go uh, the main purpose of the architecture as you will see a little later is to provide the uh, the security and safety of data uh, by providing some recovery mechanism that is one of the major things in the architecture here so we'll see how it works now let us say a user is logged into SQL plus and he fires a simple command select select uh, select star from orders and then order by order by order date DT this is the uh, simple select statement the user has fired now we know that the data for orders table is sitting somewhere in some table space it is on the hard disk so this is what we have already understood this is the hard disk on my hard disk there is what is there there is a system table space there is a sysox table space then there is a temp table space for temporary things and then there is undo along with this i'm going to draw maybe on this side here along with this there are some other table spaces let us say a table space called as a uh, order data o odt hmm? not ODT maybe O data and this is that table space the size of the table space assume that it is one gigabyte with one data file and my orders table is sitting here the first extent and the second extent those are the two extents for the order table now when this user types this select statement Oracle has to get the data from here and display it to the user and not just display it to the user it will have to order it by the order date and then display it to the user so it is going to do certain activities over there so how is that done the very first thing is this is how it, this is what is called as a database database in from the oracle dbs point of view is collection of data files which is nothing but collection i mean which is nothing but table spaces there so these are what i call as data files all these are data files so database is made up of data files then there is another set of files which do not contain any data our main thing is the data as you can see our order data is only over here what is the purpose of system table space data dictionary what is the purpose of sysox for certain tools like oracle enterprise manager what is the purpose of temporary table space to provide the 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 index creation sorting ability and so on undo is to provide the rollback ability all these are kind of going to support my data my data is just only one order table to support all this stuff there is all this 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 bunch of mechanism so these are all data files then to support the activity of a database there are there is one important file called as a control file control file i'm going to draw it as a triangle here that is a control file just to differentiate between the square which is a data file and the triangle which is a control file control file is a very small file these data files are bigger files in gigabytes and all that stuff control files are going to be very small file maybe megabytes one or two or three or megabytes and that contains the information about the database okay now, now i have mentioned already that the system table space contains the information about the what about the uh, the entire metadata it's the data you know how many tables and all that th things are there but control file is very similar the functionality is very similar it contains a lot of valuable information about your entire database means what uh, let me give an example how many data files are there how many table spaces are there uh, you know uh, what are there uh, you know there, there is something called as the SCN numbers uh, system change number we'll see that later but what are the system change numbers that is the age of the data file as as we keep on adding data you know yesterday the age of the data file was 300 today the age of the data file is 400 okay so SCN number system change number and, and I just mentioned this uh, not to complicate our lives I should have mentioned this thing a little later 
but uh, system change number is basically the age of the data file just understand that at, at this, this time so what is the system change number of each of these data files uh, how many data files all that information is there inside the control file control file is a binary file it means you open that in notepad or you open that in VI you will see all the gibberish things you will not see anything which is readable similarly data file is also binary file all data files are binary files if you open up this this, this data file into VI or in notepad you will not be able to see any rows in the uh, order table it is all uh, you know gibberish to us because it's a binary file and then there is a, a another set of files called as a redo file and we will see redo file in, in more detail uh, but just remember one thing redo as the name says it allows you these files these are the, at least two redo files are there they will allow you to redo a transaction undo will allow you to undo a transaction and re redo will allow you to redo a transaction exactly opposite what is undo if i delete certain rows from a table those rows will be stored inside undo and if i type the rollback command that means i am trying to undo it undo whatever i have deleted those things will be read back from the undo and will be brought into the actual table that is what undo is doing now redo is whatever i have done so far let us say i have inserted 20 rows i want to do the same thing again i want to redo it and that means again i want to reinsert 20 rows again i want to delete those rows again i want to kind of do something all those transactions i want to redo it and why somebody would like to redo those things again and again only if i have lost my data only if i have lost my data if there is some problem with my data file something is corrupt in that situation there has to be certain mechanism to redo it again and that is what the redo files are so this is in a very little short span that i have explained these are data files which contains the actual data and some other things these are the control files that contain the information about the data files that contain information about the age of the data file which is called as the SCN that contains what are the redo files all that stuff is kept inside the control file it really controls the database that's why it is called as a control file without the access to the control file your database is pretty much useless if you really want to create some problems for your uh, DBA uh, and if you do have access go and delete the control file it's a very small file and if you delete the control file your whole database is gonna crash okay it's that critical it's that critical obviously you know we shouldn't do this thing uh, but uh, yes we will see in the recovery scenarios what if the control file is lost it is so critical that in Oracle documentation they say that keep a copy of that Keep at least two copies so totally three control files they are exact replicas of each other and keep them because if one is gone if one is corrupt then the other one will be helpful and that is why we say that control files are duplicated in oracle's terminology they are multiplexed multiplexing means duplicating means mirroring so i have multiplexed a control file this control file is exactly same as this this control file is exactly same as this contains very valuable information for your database okay and redo we will come back to redo little later so multi control files are multiplexed because they are very important so this is what my database is as somebody is typing this statement the data is over here it has to be given to the user now how is data given to the user it is not directly read from here and given to the user there is certain mechanism which is called as there is a memory area called as SGA this stands for system global area system global area this is the memory this is the hard disk and this is the RAM so every uh, Unix machine or sorry every every operating system will be working with the hard disk will be working with the RAM and will be working with the CPUs those are the three main components of any computer there any server so out of maybe let us say you have uh, let us say you have a laptop which is of having uh, four gigabytes of RAM and out of that four gigabytes of RAM certain RAM will be used by the operating system program itself operating system is a program itself it will utilize certain kind of memory 
So let us say out of 4 gigabytes, uh, you know, 500 megabytes are gone to the operating systems. You are running some other programs if you are, uh, you know, a, a doing a web browsing and all that stuff. The Internet Explorer is also another program which will utilize certain memory and so other things. We are, we are talking about a lab environment here. So whatever is remaining out of that RAM which is remaining at that time, you should allocate certain amount of RAM to what is called as the SGA, System Global Area. And this system global area, this RAM will be utilized by Oracle to give this data to the user. So this acts as a middleman between the actual data which is sitting on the disk and the user. Every time a user requests certain kind of data, then the data is read from the disk and it is brought into the memory which is the SGA before it is given to the user. This is always there and why Oracle does that? Oracle does this thing because accessing data from the disk is always very time consuming because disk has RPM, they are mechanical uh, instruments and it takes a long time to read the data but once it is read, Oracle will bring it into the memory and next time if anybody requests the same data then Oracle will give it from the memory instead of giving it from the disk. So this is for better performance. Inside this SGA, inside the system global area, there is a sub area called as buffer cache, buffer cache, BC. Uh, I call it BC, many people won't call it BC, just for a short form, buffer cache. It is actually the full name is database buffer cache. So this is a certain area within the SGA and SGA is within the total RAM of that machine. So let us say the SGA of my Oracle database is uh, out of that 4 gigabyte, let us say 2 gigabyte is my SGA. 2 gigabyte has been allocated to my SGA. Now how to allocate 2 gigabyte to an SGA, we'll see that. But assuming that 2 gigabyte has been allocated to my SGA, within that 2 gigabyte, certain other area, other maybe out of that 2 gigabyte, uh, let us say, uh, uh, you know, 500 megabyte is allocated for the buffer cache. Now what is the purpose of the buffer cache? Here is how things happen. When a user is asked select star from orders, order by, then the user will actually go and see is are the data blocks in the buffer cache for this table orders. Okay. And usually if the database has just been started, everything is on the disk. So those data blocks which really contain the order data, all those data blocks are brought it into the buffer cache. All the data blocks are brought into the buffer cache only for the orders table. And then once they are brought in there, they will remain there. They will remain there because other people will be benefited because of their stay over there. But as you can see, this is only 500 megabytes. Little later on, somebody else may, came, uh, may come and he will say, okay, I want to select from the uh, you know jobs table, I want to select from the financial table, accounts payable table. All those are in different table spaces maybe. Now, now it is a different table space. This is one gigabyte, this is also one gigabyte, but this is only 500 megabytes. So what is going to happen that the blocks which are already there, they will be uh, kicked out by the new incoming blocks from here. They will be kicked out by the new incoming blocks from here. And this is managed by what is called as the LRU mechanism. Least recently used blocks are kicked out from the buffer cache and the remaining blocks are, or the most recently used blocks are kept inside the buffer cache because buffer cache is very small as compared to the total data in the data files. So whatever is required immediately is brought over here. Whatever was least recently used, that means whatever was old will be kicked out and it will be either sent to the data file or otherwise it will be lost. Lost in a sense, the data will not be lost, it will be overwritten because there has nothing, I mean, if the data here is uh, 100 blocks, they will be brought over here, then there is no point in rewriting them back to the disk. So they will be overwritten unless and until they are modified. So we'll see, you know, when the data block gets modified, what needs to be done, that is a little later. So all these buffer cache blocks, these are called as buffers actually. So this block is called as a buffer. When it is on the data file, it is called as a database block. When it is brought to the uh, buffer cache, it is called as a buffer. So this is what happens, select star from orders, order by order, so all the blocks are brought into over here. 
So this is the first step, but there is a lot of mechanism that happens before that, and we'll come back to that in, a, in just a second. So one point to remember here is I will just summarize what I said. What is a database? A database is a set of files. What type of files? Data files, control files, and redo files. That is what a database is. A database is given a name like focus one. So this is what is focus one. This is all focus one. If I ask you to take a backup of focus one, you will take a backup of all these data files, keep it somewhere else, and that is the backup of database focus one. Not just the data files, but also the control files, also the redo files. That is the backup. So this is what a database is. Now, in order to access the data in the database, you need to have what is called as a memory area, which is called as a SGA, system global area. And within the system global area, there is buffer cache in which the data blocks are brought from the disk and kept in the buffer cache before they are displayed to the user. That is the purpose of the buffer cache. So this is what something that we have seen so far. So I'm going to take a, uh, take a pause and then we'll come back to the next uh, point which is the parsing of